to Frequency Matters, the RFM Microwave Update Series. I'm Pat Hindle. I'm here with my co-host, Gary LaRude. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the December Government and Military Electronics-themed issue, along with the European Microwave Week-themed issue. So it's a dual issue here. I wanted to go over the cover art and how we developed that and tied all this together. So the background, as you can see, is Van Gogh's Starry Night representing uh, the Dutch artists uh, from the Netherlands, like Rembrandt and some other ones. And that's the theme of European Microwave Week, the art of microwaves. Mm. And we also chose the Starry Night to represent the space component of government and military electronics and added some CubeSats for uh, good measure. So it all kind of ties together the art of microwaves theme of European Microwave Week and government and military electronics because there's also a couple of important government organizations in the Netherlands. There's TNO and the European Space Research and Technology Center, and they both do some work in the space area. So we have a lot going on there with the cover. Um, it should be uh, good to know. Yeah, right. very creative and uh, hard to imagine that all that thought goes into it. So the cover feature is very interesting. It's written by Helen Duncan, and it surveys companies in the RF and microwave field that have some Dutch roots or are headquartered there. So she covers the government organizations that I just mentioned. There's also a significant semiconductor presence there with NXP and right. Altum RF, iMac, and some other ones. And she also takes a look at the test and measurement and software companies that have some roots there. So very interesting article to take a look at. So what do we have for technical features? Well, we have a very full issue from Epirus Systems uh, based on the defense theme. They talk about how the evolution of solid state technology, particularly the output power improvements, are really enabling electromagnetic pulse systems. Then from Keysight, an article on how AI and machine learning are changing the EW landscape. Our Fabs and Labs visits Aronia in Germany. They've come up with a really cool drone detection system. And then we have a technical feature on a low radar cross-section microstrip patch antenna. And widening the aperture a little bit, we have another technical feature on 28 and 38 gigahertz mimic oscillators and rounding it out from analog devices a perspective on how Open RAN is changing the 5G landscape. So a lot to read in this issue. Yeah, this is actually one of our largest December issues, so I really want to thank our advertisers for their support. Yeah, definitely. So I want to note that we are working on a podcast that will be posted very shortly. We talk with Glenn Clark, and he's the Corporate Vice President of Research and Development at Cadence, and we cover the integration of AWR into the company and the future uh, products he has for 2021. So that's a good one to check out. You can go to podcast.microwavejournal.com. Right. We have a whole plethora of podcasts there yeah, waiting for you. a everybody. lot of them. Turning to the news, I saw that the Global Mobile Suppliers Association announced a new group of 23 founding companies, and they have formed a uh, 4G, 5G fixed wireless access form. And those are chipset companies, module companies, and terminal companies that are going to foster the development of fixed wireless access, which we know is very big right now. Yeah, I think that's a good move on their part. And I also took a look at the uh, 2020 Ericsson Mobility Report for November, and I think you did too. And they state that they think more than a billion people will be covered by 5G at the, the end of this year. So that's 15% of the population. And they're predicting in five years, by 2026, that it'll be 60% of the population. So quite a fast rollout that they're expecting there. Uh, what did you see in the report? Well, I thought it was interesting that in the pandemic year, they had a 50% growth in uh, data from third quarter of last year to third quarter of this year. And then they project that that data consumption is going to go up four and a half times to something like 220 exabits per month by 2026. And more interesting to me is that they forecast 50% of that data is going to cross through uh, 5G networks. Wow. I also saw on the news that uh, Qualcomm has announced their latest Snapdragon 5G mobile platform. They call it the 888, <laughs> and it has uh, a plethora of improvements. So they've increased the AI capability, also the processor for uh, photography and gaming applications. And then more of interest to us on the uh, 5G side, of course, it handles the uh, third generation or it has the third generation X60 modem RF system. And it includes, of course, millimeter wave as well as sub six gigahertz. And they do TDD, FDD, dynamic spectrum sharing, virtually everything, carrier aggregation. And then not only that, of course, on the Wi-Fi side, they cover Wi-Fi six 
but they've also got the capability to handle the expanded 6 gigahertz band, so Wi-Fi 6E. So all of that in the new Snapdragon 888. Yeah, they're the only company that goes from processors to antenna now, right? Right, exactly. So I want to remind everybody to register for European Microwave Week. It takes place January 10th through the 15th, and you can go to eumweek.com to register. And also uh, look out for our next episode, which will be our annual holiday edition. So you'll see Gary and I in our silly sweaters, and we'll be covering some very low-cost test equipment they can actually afford to give to the RF engineer for Christmas. Right. So that finishes this episode. We'd like to thank our sponsors, RFMW, a pure play distributor for RF and microwave products, and they have an extensive product line. And we want to welcome Cadence as a sponsor to this episode. They're a leader in electronic design, including the RF design tools from AWR. Thanks for watching and stay safe. Let's keep our fingers crossed we'll be together in person next year.